so this right here is the finished product of what I'll be making in this video. It's a bomb with a helper and randomized positioning on the right side of the screen that shoots out eight bullets on all sides. So let's do this. So first I'm gonna make a circle shaped helper. So I will create a new object, make it a circle, label it as a helper and call it bomb helper. So now I want to have this circle grow from 0, 0 to 4, 4. So I will click the first keyframe in the scale timeline. I will set it to 0, 0. Then I will add a keyframe over here. Another keyframe. And I'll set it to 4, 4. And I'll also set the ease type so that it uses the... I guess the out circ ease type. Now, if we play it, it should look like this. So now I'm going to make the actual object that's going to show up. So I want it to show up right at this pink helper right here. So I'm going to click the pink helper. Then I will copy this helper object and paste it right over here. I'll shift plus drag it down uncheck the helper box and I will call this thing bomb object. Now I also want this thing to stay uh, on screen for a little bit before it disappears. So all I have to do to increase its duration is add another keyframe to the scale timeline. So it it stays at the scale 4 4 for this whole amount of time. And then I will add another keyframe right here and set it to zero, zero. For this point right here, I'm going to have it fade out in the in sign ease type. And for this keyframe right here, I'm going to give it the transition out elastic. So now that we, now that we have our transitions and our scales, if we play it, it should look like this. So now all I have to do is just auto kill the helper. It's best if I auto kill it while it's being covered up by the actual object. So I will go to the helper. I will add a keyframe uh, and move it so that it ends when it's being covered up by this object as you can see, like right now. And now I will check the auto kill box. So before I randomize the position, I want to add the bullets. Uh, and as I said in the last video, each bullet needs two objects, an origin and an actual bullet. Uh, in this case though, I'm gonna do something a little different. So first I'm gonna make an origin at the exact time where I want the bullet to show up, right here. Uh, I have this marker here just for future reference. Uh, so I'll make a new object. I will shift plus drag it below. I will call it bomb origin. And uh, ob obviously I want it to show up wherever the square does. So I will parent it to bomb helper. And I also forgot to parent this thing to bomb helper, so I'm going to do that as well. So just for now, I'm going to make this uh, origin thing a triangle. I'm going to make it red, and I'm going to adjust the render depth and make this thing a helper. Uh, wrong box. Just so I know which way this thing is pointing. Uh, right now, uh, it's showing up, but I'm gonna make this thing empty once I'm done with it. Now, I'm gonna make the first actual bullet. I'm gonna click on the marker again, make another object, shift plus drag it down. Uh, I will make it a circle, and then I will set the scale to 1, 1. And then I will call it bomb bullet 1. And I will also make sure 
to parent this thing to the bomb origin. So now I want this bullet to move up. All I have to do is add a keyframe and change the bullet's Y position. Okay, so this step is actually very important. I want the bullet to be able to move off screen before it disappears, no matter where the bomb shows up. And if I don't make sure of that, a bullet could move like 20 units and then disappear in the middle of the screen, and I don't want that. So that means I want it to move a sufficient distance off screen, but I want it to take its time to get there. Uh, now anyone who's been in a physics class should know this already, but in case you don't I'll just say it. Speed equals distance over time. So that means if you want the bullet to go slower, but you can't decrease the distance, you need to increase the time it takes to get to its destination. So to make sure that this bullet goes all the way off screen before disappearing, I'm going to have it move 80 units up from its origin. So I will make a new keyframe in the position timeline and set position Y to 80. Now obviously if I keep this keyframe here, uh, the bullet is going to move way too fast. So all I have to do is move this keyframe out a little bit all the way out here. That's perfect. Now all I have to do is check the auto kill box to ensure that it disappears once it's off screen. So now I'm going to go ahead and make three more bullets. This one is moving up 80 units, so I'm going to have three more that will move to the left, right, and down. I will simply click on my marker again, copy this object, paste it, drag it below, and I'll call it Bomb Bullet 2. Now I'm going to go and hit, click on this second keyframe, and instead of moving 80 units up, I want it to move 80 units to the left. So I'm going to set the Y to 0 and the X to negative 80. So now I'll make a third bullet, I'll copy this one, I'll paste it, shift plus drag it, call it bomb bullet 3, and this bullet I want it to move 80 units down instead of 80 units up. So all I have to do is click the second keyframe and switch the Y position to negative 80 instead of 80. And finally I'll make a copy of the second bullet, shift plus drag it down, call it bomb bullet 4, I guess. Click the second keyframe and instead of negative 80, I'm going to have it move to the right, so positive 80. And now all I have to do is click on the origin, uh, I'll make it empty, I'm going to click the empty checkbox to make it invisible. So let's see how this looks now. So now that we have a bomb that explodes and shoots four bullets out, but you're probably thinking, what, whatever happened to making eight bullets? How do you do it diagonally? Uh, and it's very simple actually, now that I already have four. Uh, I'm going to make the origin visible again, just for reference. So first, I'm going to go to my marker again, and I'm going to copy bomb origin and all four of the bullets. Control C. And now I will paste them in the exact same spot and shift plus drag them below. So now I have two origins and two sets of four bullets. Uh, now watch this. All I have to do is to click on the second bomb origin, click on the very first keyframe in the rotation timeline, and set this to 45 degrees. Now, if we play the song, we have a complete bomb right now. Uh, for those of you who are probably confused, I'll explain it the best I can. When I set this origin to have a rotation of 45 degrees, all the bullets that were parented to it basically just followed suit, and now they move away from the origin at the same angle. Uh, if I set this origin 
to have a different angle, all the bullets would still follow suit and uh, rotate at the ex exact same angle and move out at that angle. So uh, now I'll just set both of these origins to be invisible by clicking the empty box for both of them. Now, if I play it, that looks good. Now, I want to randomize this bomb where it appears. I want it to appear at random Y positions on the right side of the screen, but I also want some randomization in the X coordinate as well. So, I'm going to click the helper, click the second randomizing option for position, and I will alter it as I please. So. Now my bomb should be randomized the way I want it to. So right now my uh, helper right here is is uh, randomized so that it appears at random X positions between 26 and 33 and random Y positions between 17 and negative 17 which means it'll always appear somewhere in this area so now I want to implement this thing into the bullet sequence that I made in the previous video so first I'm gonna make this into a prefab I'm going to select all of these objects, prefab, new external prefab, GP bomb, I'm going to label it as a bomb, and create prefab. Now I'm just going to paste it right here. So I will add this to my list of level prefabs and click it. Now all I have to do is use the prefab offset to sync it so that whenever I paste this thing it'll appear on the explosion rather than the warning. So let me just do that right now. Now it should be synced up. So now I'm going to set my bomb prefab uh, to my select quick prefab thing. So now whenever I press the question mark key it should paste one of my prefabs. And all I have to do is tap this thing to the beat of the music. Beautiful. I was originally going to make a bomb in a completely different, much more complicated way, and as soon as I thought of this method, I immediately started recording it. Uh, not to mention with all the stuff going on in the world right now, I have some time on my hands. Uh, anyway, I hope this series is helping those of you who are confused about the editor, and I'm going to see if I can make more of these things in my free time. So, uh, bye!